I woke up this morning and I looked up at the forum post and the first one I saw today said Allied races are a scam. Not my words, but words of one person shared by a few others. And it's actually interesting to see because this is something I actually got asked and told yesterday on stream about allied races. I decided to do a little bit of streaming, we did a little bit of Mythic Plus, and I was playing around as my Nightborn allied race. Yes, that is right, I changed my rogue from a Blood Elf to a Nightborn, and so far I'm actually pretty happy with it. I like the animations, I feel like it gives a little bit more of a fresh mix to have this like Night Elfy kind of character on the Horde side. And the racial is kind of unique and interesting, and I kind of like how my passives also combo with my trinkets and such. Anyway. In today's video, I want to take a look at the forum post talking about allied races being a scam and just take a look at what people are saying. And I guess I can give my own opinion at the very end of it, but I just want to see what people are saying. So far, the idea is that people wanted a more customizability to their already existing races. More tattoos, more skin coloration options, more hair, and instead Blizzard brings in allied races. I remember when people were really honored by the idea of sub-races, even saying that they would pay to have sub-races. And the Blizzard presents allied races, and then everybody gets all upset in their spaghetti. So the question is, is allied race actually a scam, or is it basically a sub-race that people wanted? What is the difference, and is it all worth $50? Because everybody's discussing how much money it is, and if it's worth buying for BFA because of all these allied races. So I want to take a look at the allied races we have right now and talk a bit about allied races we'll get in the future and if they really are worth or if they really are a scam and kind of point out what people are talking about in the forum post. So let's get right into it with the High Mountain Tauren. The High Mountain Tauren are basically a normal Tauren with antlers. Aesthetically, they don't look that much different. Lore-wise, they did explain a little bit of why these guys are different and how they got their antlers because there was the War of the Ancients and then High Mountain Torrent joining the fight with a demon. I'm not a big lore guy, so I won't pretend like I know exactly what I'm talking about, but these guys, as far as I understand, aren't supposed to look that much different. They are a sub-race, they're an offset of what Thunder Bluff Torrent we know and we love since the days of vanilla. These guys are an offset of them, a lot like the Tonka, changed physically by where they live and simply geographically, they're still Torrin. They're just like offset cousin, so these guys would be an example of a sub race. But because of their actual aesthetics, people would say that these guys are basically a copy paste. And let's be honest, I mean, it is basically a copy paste with better antlers, with slightly more facial hair customization, or I guess hair customization in general. They're not supposed to be different, at least it kind of makes sense in my head. Let's take a look at Void Elves too. As far as I understood from the storyline of Void Elves and how you acquire them, these guys are, and I know I'll get this one wrong, either a High Elf or a Blood Elf that want to study the Void. I'm not sure what the difference is between them. Again, not a big lore guy. But these guys are basically your round of a mill Elf, like a Blood Elf looking guy that wanted to see how far the rabbit hole in the Void goes. So these guys are fairly new. They won't have so many crazy physical changes. Of course, they look like they've been underwater for a little bit long and their hair, facial hair and haircut either makes them look like greasers or huge fans of Evanescence or something. But for these guys, yeah, they are, again, a copy-paste. And this is kind of what people are talking about. These guys are basically the, oh, people would say, financial move to give Blood Elves to the Alliance just to make a little bit more money. Which, I guess, in a way, could look at it that way. And when you take a look at the Lightforge Unite, this is more or less the uh, same thing, except instead of giving Alliance more Elves or the Blood Elf, they give an Alliance just another Draenei 2.0, a copy-paste. Lore-wise, these guys make sense, though, because they are Draenei, they just went through a whole Lightforge in effect. So it's not like it's a whole other sub-race, so these guys are basically the offspring of the original Draenei, just a, a Draenei that decided to take some classes on religion, and the Naru and came back converted. I mean, it's a really cool storyline. It just makes me feel a little bit culty, but it's like a really neat, unique way. Again, this is one of those things that people talk about. They're saying that maybe what if Draenei, what if the Void Elves, the Blood Elves could have just had different skin tone, different hair options, different, um, what is it, the symbols on the, on, the, on the top of the head of a Draenei. Like, what if that was just a customizability for the original race instead of making its own sub race? Now, all the other races so far have been 
sub races, but Nightborn, would you really consider them a sub race of Night Elves? They are very similar to Night Elves in terms of their elves, but the way that they came from, the resources of mana they use, I mean they're very very similar and they might have had like one ancestor at the very top, but eventually that ancestor split up into different elves. That's why we have Blood Elves, that's why we have Night Elves and Nightborn. To me they seem so different. Blizzard simply reutilize the Night Elf skeleton and some of the idle animations and most of the combat and emote animations, but the way that the cast actually, they, they race that carries itself. The slight change to the proportions of the arms being a little bit thinner, the hands being slightly more proportionate by being a little smaller than that of a night elf, the head, the ears, the stance with the legs, I feel like enough aesthetically it's it's pleasing enough and different enough for me in order to say that that's its own race. I mean then there's also slight changes like the jump animation where they're very very similar but Blizzard utilized already existing assets in the game to make a new spin at an elf. In a way, by utilizing already pre-existing assets, Blizzard can churn out a lot more of these allied races, which are not meant to be their own races, they're meant to be allied races, which is somewhere between an offset of an already existing race, like a very very minor offset, to a long distant cousin that's slightly different but not quite, but aesthetically different, in looks are different, but utilizing an already pre-existing skeleton just to rig the model. I feel like this allows us to play a lot more of the sub-races that we wanted to, and I feel like Allied Race is a great idea because Blizzard was able to bring four of them to the table. They're not something that's a brand new race, it's not like Blizzard made four different races, but they made four different ways, new ways of playing your character. These Allied Races have different races, and I think that's more important for me in terms of gameplay and for a lot of other people. Because in a way, let's say you have a Blood Elf and a Void Elf, and they look exactly the same, but if you make, make them both mages, a Blood Elf Mage will have a different gameplay, slightly, than a Void Elf Mage. The gameplay part is the important part for me because of the racials and the passes, what they bring to the table and how they allow you to play slightly differently than other people that are playing the same class as you but are a different race. Take two torrents, one High Mountain, one the normal torrent, make them both Druids and then take a look at the racials and how they get to play. You have a Charge versus an AoE Stun. Both of these can be utilized in different ways. So the gameplay I feel like for both of them, even though they're the same class and they're, though they look so similar in terms of race, the racials themselves add that extra gameplay aspect to it. So I feel like the racials themselves justify enough because in a way Blizzard is tur churning out more races in terms of slight difference in terms of looks, but the gameplay changes are still present. And the fact that Blizzard can get, what, four of them out ahead of time and then we'll get two more by the end by the time bfa is released we'll get zandalari and we'll get the dark iron to do the storylines for we'll have six new almost brand new races or six new ways of playing same classes we've already played so i think that's the exciting part for me and kind of that justifies the price on top of it i want to say the price 50 dollars is for bfa not for allied races. I feel like after reading the forum post for a little bit of allied races are a scam, it almost makes me feel that people are talking about allied races as, oh, I paid 50 bucks for a reskin. Well, you paid 50 bucks for a reskin, as well as a, probably the multiple races will have, multiple dungeons, multiple content, level and experience, PvP, hopefully that'll be a lot better in BFA, transmogs, you'll, uh, the, level, the brand new level experience, stat squish, azurite um, necklaces that we'll be getting. Like there's so many aspects to what BFA will be. To lock it down to allied races, I think is just a little unfair. And to say that we're paying 50 bucks just for allied races, it's a little unfair. Allied races are part of what you'll get in BFA and you're getting it early but you'll be able to get it in the future more and more and more. And Blizzard said they want to introduce more allied races. So if this allows Blizzard to churn out more allied races, more sub races into the game, more new ways of playing the same classes we already play, I think that's exciting and I think it's going to be awesome. Because to make a brand new race with brand new animations to make it match for storyline and lore wise is kind of hard. Because I do like my stories and I do like for my lore to make sense. So for me that stuff is important. Also, on top of it, I do want to mention that Dark Iron Dwarfs will be basically dwarfs, that's a recolor, and Zandalari Trolls will have the Night Elf rigging animation to them. So, I guess to that end, now that you guys know all the allied races, how does that make you feel? Especially now that you've heard about the Zandalari and the Dark Iron. Do you think the allied races really are a scam, or are you like me that says, 
there are change in terms of how you play gameplay there's slight change in terms of how we can look as a character and they can churn out a lot more of these guys which allows us a lot more customization options so i feel like in the long run for me they are worth but what are you guys thoughts on it do you think they're a scam do you think they're worth 50 dollars with the rest of bfa or do you think they're not do you think the blizzard should have done something different about them let me know all that in the comments below i want to make a great conversation start out of this one thank you guys all so much for watching i hope you enjoyed today's video if you guys enjoyed it, go ahead and give it a like likes allow my videos to reach a way wider audience and for my channel to grow in the long run because that seems to be the youtube's current analytics system or whatever and if you guys enjoy the kind of content we have, the BFA updates, 735 stuff, uh, patch updates, 5511 duels, go ahead and hit subscribe in order to catch us in every single video and we'll put out two of them a day. If you guys enjoy the live streams and want to catch them or even participate in some of the dueling live streams like our 5511 duels, which are happening very, very soon, then go ahead and hit the follow bell notification next to the subscription button down below in order to catch our live streams, which happen every single day except for Thursday, my one day off. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see all of you guys in another video.